Hello, and welcome to Top of the World. Yes, I'm on my pins, I'm up, and I'm back, and I'm feeling good. 100%? No, 95%, definitely 95%. And I wanna thank all of you for just humbling me, just amazing, just incredible, the get well wishes, just, and, and the admission by some of you of the same acts of stupidity that led to me being on my back. I made a mistake. I knew I was playing with the devil, dancing with fire. I knew that, and I carried on regardless. And uh, that did me no favours, I can assure you. Now, I still haven't had the results back from the hospital, so I'm still not 100% sure what I had. But whatever it was, I identified it correctly as a virus and the correct treatment because the course of antibiotics, well, I wouldn't have survived. There's just, there's just no way. Anyway, what am I doing today? Right, here we go. So for those of you who are regulars, you'll know that I repaired the rockers on the car because I had to, because the van's engine seized. It's in another video. Been a bit of a rough, yeah, it's been a bit of a rough year. How did that go when it went for inspection? Well, badly. Badly and, and even more badly. In fact, more badly than I could have imagined. Why? I thought you did all the rust, Simon. Well, I did. I did all the rust that I could find and I could see and everything that I thought I needed to do. What I didn't do was climb right underneath, take a pointed hammer and beat the living hell out of the chassis, like the MOT inspector did, like, like the self safety inspection officer did. In addition to that, he also has somehow damaged the brakes on the car. So there's an issue on the car now that wasn't there. How did he do that? I don't know. From here to the inspection station's an hour. I drove there, no problem. You get out, he drives it in, drives it on. When he get it up onto the ramp, he's underneath. Well, obviously he's put the hammer through the chassis. I can hear him doing it. And then he comes to me, he says, and the front wheels are seized on. I said, no. He said, yeah. I said, no, they can't be. I said, I've just driven it. You've just driven it. Sure enough, when he lifted up the front, the front wheels were seized solid. And, and when he finished with the inspection, he managed to get outside and just abandon it right outside the door. I couldn't actually physically drive the car. Anyway, so what are we doing today? There's a car in my shop. I thought I was done with this. I really thought I was done with this, no. I don't know if I can weld this. And there's a number of reasons why I don't know if I can weld this. So the plan is to get this up in the air, get underneath and do a close inspection and decide whether I can actually weld it and save it. Because if I can't, well, we're in a whole new world of hurt. You hear that? Can you hear that pump? Why is that making a noise? I don't think I did the video of the heating in here, which has been getting worse and worse and worse. Anyway, I took the whole unit out and flushed it out and it's working well now, but I can hear a really bad noise. Why can I hear a really bad noise? This was leaking and we had all sorts of problems in here. Something's rattling. Oh, that's all right. Fixed. Right, that was an easy fix. I have got to nip outside and rake up some grass and leaves to put my worms to bed for the winter. <coughs> We've got, still got no snow, amazingly enough, but of course it's gloom now. The sun's just not rising. You can see out there, it's just, I don't know if it comes across on camera, it's just gloomy. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning. Right. Let's get this old go up in the air and uh, I'll see if I can get you in there and we'll have a look at the chassis, just in case I can fix it. The car's inside, I brought it in yesterday so it'll warm up. Because obviously I don't want to be outside there, minus six or minus seven, whatever it is, with uh, everything frozen solid. So I'm gonna jack it up in the air and then we'll have a look. Whilst I'm doing this, it's also time, actually it's a little past time for me, to put on uh, 
studded, metal studded winter tyres. They've also got to go on soon. And because you have to have so many wheels and tyres to each vehicle, I don't keep the spare. I just have four summer and four winter and then put one of the opposite wheels in here. So it's on its summer tyres at the moment. And there lies my biggest pain. The summer tyres were shot, absolutely shot. So my mistake, I, I persuaded my Sarah to put a new set of tyres on it for its inspection so that we didn't have any problems and it did need them. Not thinking that there could possibly be such an issue with the car that would see it in the scrapyard. Anyway, I made that mistake, I got that wrong. So it's sitting on, these were new last year and it's sitting on a brand new set of boots, probably only done 200 miles. I mean, we drive it once a fortnight. Anyway, so I'll get some winter tyres out and then when we get this up in the air, when it comes down, it can go on its winter tyres. You know, I'm struggling to believe he even put his hammer through that. He must have hit that, so well, he was hitting it hard. He was hitting it really hard. No, no, that's good. Oh, dear. No, no, that's good at all. Right, let's get you in here and I can show you what I can see. So it's, uh, either side of the rear suspension hanger in the chassis so this this section here is this is the up and over the axle and then it, it goes down to the rear chassis the suspension hanger there right well there's the hole and he put that hole there with his hammer he just kept hammering it until the hole went through now what's interesting is the metal all around it is quite thick and then there's another one on the other side. Again, he formed that hole with his hammer. He must have known. He must have known that went all the way through. So that's the, that's the main chassis rail rotten completely underneath what is the suspension hanger here. I don't even know if that's weldable. I mean, how am I going to do that? We've got fuel lines, fuel lines, brake lines, e-brake lines. Yeah, that's bad. Oh dear, that's really bad. I didn't realise the moulds were even that big. I mean, that one there is just huge. I don't even know if I can fix those. He said it was the same on this side. But he didn't punch no holes through here. I heard him punch holes through here but there's no evidence of it. So right there is where he put his hammer through on the other side. Not unless it's, oh, he's done it there. Okay, so all this, of course, we've, we made all this up. This is all new steel running through here. Let's get around the other side and have a look. But you can see she's not in a good way. Look at this. And this is all because this was in the city where they use salt. Well, and uh, I can tell you from experience, Toyota engines, well, they just go and go and go. You don't have no trouble with those, but it would appear the chassis on this has uh, had so much salt and water lying into it. Yeah, right, yeah, we've got a similar problem here. So that's not such a difficult one to fix. But the other side, 
yeah i'm not sure if i've got the ability to be able to do that here i'm just not geared up for this kind of stuff i've kind of got my way through so far but doing everything with a stick welder is just the most ridiculous thing Right, so I've been further digging into this. We can see everything's come out of the chassis. I pulled this back, I've cleaned this up now. All right. We got another hole there. Now, I decided to dig even further into this. Let me see if I can turn all these lights off. And the reason being is when you drive at a certain speed in a certain gear, and it never used to do this. The car kind of rocks and it's just not been quite right. And uh, when I got the van a year or so ago, that was another one, that was pre-channel, I think even, was it? Yeah, it was. I had to weld the L out of that. And the reason that I got the van is, uh, well, I had a van. Anyway, that's another story. The reason I got that van is because this car was doing everything. I mean, absolutely everything. It already always had a trailer on it, and it was full of tools, and I was just messing it up. And we just had the one vehicle. So the van was, as I was getting more and more outside work, we really needed the van, and that took up the slack, and of course it could tow the bigger trailer as well. Well, of course, when the van engine went back at the beginning of the summer, I think it was. I had to revert back to using this for everything. I've got to turn this light off. That's it, I've got this green dot now. And the car was making this uh, kind of, anyway, so I've just dug in deeper behind all the plastic and everything else on this side chassis, this side here. And just in front of where the suspension hanger is, the chassis actually cracked all the way around and it's been flexing. And I wondered, I had this, why is the car doing that? Once you get up to speed and it's all smooth, it obviously just straightens out and drags. So where I've had this so overloaded and we've pulled some big stuff, which we've not shown, on that big trailer that pulled in the generator. Anyway, it's done. So I was only doing all this because my Sarah went and spent out on a new set of tyres. So all of this, if this had had these old tyres on that wouldn't have gone through inspection anyway, I'd have just driven it to the scrapyard and then got the bus home. So this chassis is cracked all the way around. So, and the other side's gone as well. There's something wrong with the brakes that the man in the inspection place did with the front calipers. The front door window actuator has gone completely so that window doesn't work and the other one is intermittent, which obviously at minus 25, if you, anyway, it's done. That's it. I can't, I can't repair it. I can't repair the chassis. It's beyond my capabilities with what I've got here. And then if I can repair it, can I repair it safely? I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. It, it's not like a square body where I take the body off, get the chassis out and just, re it's, it's not that. So that's a kick in the pants. That's the second vehicle this year. Anyway, I got a look at it from sensible economics and um, it's dead, it's done, it's, it's all over. Well, I'm, I'm having quite a bad, I'm having quite a bad year this year, if I'm honest. Like the generator, I thought that was just gonna start up and plug in. We did all that work for that. No, the van and now the car. So that's it, we're done. Now, it wouldn't be such a, a, on a normal year, it would not be such a massive thing because we're just about coming to, to, to winter, right? In the winter, we use the car once a month, if, I can, if we have to do twice a month, but once a month, and we can get to town on the bus, no problem. However, something I haven't told you about that may well come off is different from this winter than any other winter. And every other winter, I've finished my work by now and what money I've made that has to get us through the spring. And that's just how life is. And you can't work outside anyway. And I don't take any more work on because it's just enough for me just to keep this going and keep us survived over the winter 
without, you know, having to do anything else. And quite often it's so busy or so treacherous or whatever it is, you can't do anything else. And my log season, my, my log cutting season, as you know, starts January. But this year's a little bit different. I've agreed to do something that I would not normally do. I'd just say, no, you, you, you have to wait to May. May to September is my working time. That's it, that's not abnormal. That's, that's quite normal for these regions. However, I might have taken on, it, provided I get it, some work through the winter. And uh, I can't do that on the bus. Yeah, I've got to find another vehicle. And then once I found a vehicle, I've got to find a way of paying for it. Anyway, that's life. It's, it could be, could be worse, couldn't it? I could still be on my back, sweating, in a pool of... You know, I had this dream. I don't even know if I want to go here. I had this dream, and I dreamed I'd punctured my waterbed. <laughs> well, for those that you've had what I had, right, and it sounds like a few of you had, you know what I mean. When I woke up, I'm like, has this really happened? Has it? Oh, I was just... And the bed was just destroyed, and... Anyway... So what I'm going to do now is put the winter tyres on this because it's got to have the winter tyres on it. I've only got six days and then this gets a driving ban, which means the only time it can go on the road after that is direct to the inspection centre. Well, it's not going to the inspection centre, it's on a one-way trip to the scrapyard. I'll put the winter tyres on it, get anything that's any use out of it, the, extension, uh, the jump leads and stuff like this, and then park that up outside, then we've got to get onto something else. Well, what a shame. Yeah, that is a shame. Have I got my money out of it? Oh, yeah. So I, I, I'm sure I've said this. I bought this cheap. I bought that cheap three or four years ago from, uh, uh, from um, well, it was a police car. Well, not a patrol car, but it, it, was, it was owned and run by the police. So it's just turned 400,000 kilometres. What's that, quarter of a million miles? I and mean, in the time we've owned it, I've had to repair, repair those two rockers and we put tyres on it and, and service it. So it's been a good car and it's been my van more than it's been a car. Anyway, that's the only sad part. There are four brand new 200 mile tyres there. And then sitting right next to it, that's what I did on Thursday. So today's Saturday, you'll see this video today. But when I, the first day of my recovery, that's all the birch for the kitchen that was stacked up outside. So we cut that a year ago, that come from the church. So that's all now inside and uh, the heating's on and working. So that will stay warm now. And I've got another similar pack that size to bring in. And that's for our winter projects inside our cupboards, our new kitchens. All the stuff that I've got to do here. So that's the end of that one. I have potentially found um, a suitable replacement which I'm now going to have to force myself to go and look at on Monday because I'm running out on days that I can legally drive that car before that's, that's done. It's just another one of those things, isn't it? Anyway, it did need replacing. I did need another van. And uh, it's time to go and do the necessary, as much and as painful as that's going to be right about now with everything else that's going on. And I think we've got some new chicks arriving today, unless I'm very much mistaken. So my friend Peggy, she won't come on camera, but I've worked her land a lot. And uh, she's overcooked the chicken production this year, by some margin, I can tell you. When did we start that flock? Three years ago? Was it the same year we did the pigs? Yeah, maybe. Anyway, my friend Thomas, 
he's, he, he, he built her a chicken house and... Well, no, the first... No, 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 no. Firstly, we went and collected this old forest cabin. Another thing Peggy persuaded me to get into. She's... She'll, she'll drag you along a road you don't want to go if you ain't very careful. That one. So we got this old forest box and uh, I converted it into a chicken coop. That was four years ago. Might have even been five years ago. I can't remember. And, uh, and, and now she's got a big chicken coop with a big outside area. But she's... She was going to retire this year, and then, of course, Thomas got really sick last year. Anyway, she changed jobs, so now she works local, and she's home every day, and uh, some days she doesn't go to work at all. So this is, like, the first time for her in a long time. She, she used to work in a town to the south, and therefore she used to stay there all week and just come back at weekends, or however her shift works. But she's at home all the time now, and she's got carried away with her chickens, and she's got an overproduction of chicks. So out of the three eggs that we got last time, only one survived. There was no chicks in the other eggs. And uh, she's had another batch hatch now. Now all her chickens are outside, of course. So she's got some young chicks. So she's bringing me around two new chicks today. Now we're going to have a go at sex in these ones. And um, it don't matter whether they're hens or roosters because the roosters now, we're going to fatten up for meat for Sarah. Things are, you know the world, right? You live in it. Unless you've got your head stuck in a bucket of sand, you know how it's going. And it's only going to get worse. So the roosters, I'm going to feed up and then I'll slaughter those and then uh, put those in the freezer for Sarah. And as if by magic, chicks, two. Now these are not going to survive outside. So they're either going to die of cold or I'll take them. I don't have a mother for these. Can I get our current mother downstairs to adopt these. I don't know. If she doesn't, the others will kill them. So they have to go in a separate cage until they're big enough, but within the main cage. So we're going to have our attempt at sex in these two. So I explained earlier that the, the hens is what we need for eggs, and we're going to keep the roosters now, and then grow them up, and then cull them for meat. So we're going to have a go at sex in them and see... I'll show you what I know. Hey, hey. Well, we've lost that one. Casper, let's do you. So what we want to do at, get in your chair. What we want to look at is the wings. Really carefully, we want to look at the wings and see how the feathers are all in a straight line like this. Right, that's a male. That is. So that's one for the pot. All nice and smooth like that. It baited this one. Right. So this one, if we open up our feather like this, nice and gentle, you can see you've got our tips out here and then her feather, her wing comes in. They're not even feathers. This is female. This is egg production. There we go. And now we're going to go and try the impossible task and see if we can get the chick, the chicken with the current chick downstairs to adopt these. If not, we're going to have to put them in a separate cage. So all attempts of adoption have failed. You can see on the other side over there, that's the little one that's been in there a while now. And here's our two newest. So they're in there for their own safety for the time being, because the other chickens, they will kill them. That was the little one that was born in here from an egg, and that's uh, quite well accepted. And the black chicken over there is her mother. This is the chick, this huge behemoth chicken, is the chick that arrived here June, and we've got these. And they've got to come here because they'll die outside. So we'll leave them in their little integration cage for a minute and see how they go. But uh, as you can tell, acceptance has not been very good.
Here we go. We'll see how they do. So I'm sure some of you are interested into what I was doing to give myself such a nasty disease. Well, this is part of what I was doing. So this is uh, one of the cellar corridors leading to the furnace room, a room of which you're all very familiar with. So there she is running away quite nicely. She has to be on all day, every day now. Here you go, doing its thing. I built this wall here for the first time and this is all what's currently being burned. And the reason I built this wall here is because of this. Something that I've decided not to show. Is there a light on this? Oh yeah, light's on. Right. Okay, light's on. That didn't exist before. So what I had to do to get that there was, I had to trench all the concrete behind this, which I've never been able to do before, cut back a big iron pipe, and then uh, bring it up out of ground. Now that, that goes to our well. Yeah, we have a well. We have a big well, a deep well. Anyway, so there's all that wood in there, and then this wing. If you're new to the channel, there is a video called Restoring the Wood Room, which is something I needed to do for six or seven years. That's behind here. It's a big room, it's vast, considerably bigger than the room we're in now. All that wood that's in the woodshed, well, there it is. There's my birthday present. Rammed. How did I get that in there? Well, once I had left myself a little path, I had a number of stillages up the top in the factory where they come down the chute, and I actually stacked my way out of the chute, climbing in and out via the chute. So this entire room, now, you can get no more wood in it. I've left enough room here so that we can get to the kindling and so that the dehumidifier can run. And that's that room, I've never been able to do that before. It's something we've always wanted to do, but just something that's never been able to be done. So that is our wood through the worst of the winter. Everything through the worst of the winter is now downstairs. And the reason that I've done that this year is because I started this channel just as I was recovering from my disc removal. Uh, I did some major, major structural alterations to this building uh, through last winter and just as I was finishing it, um, blew my disc out and then ruptured, uh, then once it was uh, herniated, it, I, I then ruptured it, so I'm, I was done. Well, during the three months before I was operated on, I couldn't walk, I was paralysed. So Sarah had to run this whole place by herself and it became evident real fast, real fast, that if anything happened to me, this place was almost impossible to run. If not impossible to run, if Sarah then had to go and get wood from outside because she'd have to carry it because she can't drive the big tractor. So uh, yeah, now that can't happen. Now if anything was to happen to me and the same, even at this time of year, she's got enough wood to get us through till spring. So all our wood is now downstairs. Um, and of course it was in this process to which I've gone and got myself what we know now. And that's, that was in an attempt, to, uh, of course, all the mouse droppings and rat droppings and other droppings, I was trying to get off the wood because you don't want anything coming down here. And in the process I've obviously poisoned myself quite severely.
it was about 1500 hours and uh, I should call it a day now and carry on my recovery period but I put these out here because one of the things that my Sarah reminded me of as I added net yet another two chickens to the flock was uh, when I made up the, the uh, nesting boxes for down in the inside chicken area I made them out of hardboard, what, whatever was lying around because I just needed to knock some together However, down there, that's going to be a permanent feature for them now, especially through uh, at least seven months of the year. So, I've got some ply out, I need to make up some nesting boxes, something a bit more sturdy. And they fight over the same ones, they're chickens, they've got very small brains. You give them five, they're all going to get in and, uh, you know, they're going to be fighting over one. Climbing over each other to get in one, even though there's four empty ones. So, I'm going to make up some... New nesting boxes, this is the ply that I reclaimed from the packing crates on the airport almost a year ago. And uh, I disassembled this, or I've been disassembling this as the year's gone through, and I've had time, and I've got quite a stock of this now, so I'm going to make some nesting boxes, or some new nesting boxes, to replace the bad ones that I cobbled together uh, in a rush because I had no intention of keeping chickens down there, of course, and then we got chickens in November. Must be something about November where the whole world just flips out. So, I'm going to put that there. Tomorrow we'll come down and we'll make some new nesting boxes. But because it's 1,500 hours and I've been on the go since 6 o'clock this morning, I'm going to call it there. I'm going to call a video. Thanks for joining me. Thank you to all of my subscribers that have wished me well and uh, shared your experiences with me, just to let me know I'm not the only idiot out there. I've got to call a video. Thank you all for joining me, and we'll catch you on the next one. And if you're new, thank you for subscribing. I really do appreciate it. Bye for now.